In this video, we're going to look at MIDI only tracks. As the name suggests, these are tracks that output MIDI data, notes, CCs, etc., but that do not contain any sounds within them, so their purpose is for sequencing and controlling external hardware or software. If you hit Shift and Settings and open the Global Settings Accordion, you can define the number of MIDI-only banks you wish to use from 0 to 4. With them all active, you have a maximum of 32 MIDI-only tracks spread across banks E to H. You of course still have your 32 sample tracks and can use the Live Looper which we'll discuss in another video. For now, I'm just going to use one bank of MIDI-only tracks, so let's head over to Bank E. I'll press Shift and the first pad to bring up the Associated Track Settings menu for E1. By the way, in the previous video I mentioned the MIDI tracks map option in the sync settings menu, and that brings you to this same location, so now we know what that is. At the top of the menu, we can rename the track, which is self-explanatory. Below this, we have a MIDI ports accordion. Each MIDI track can send and receive data from the MIDI DIN port, MIDI USB B port, and or MIDI USB host port. These settings are discrete for each track, but there is a handy All Tracks Same option at the top of the accordion to apply settings to all of your MIDI tracks at the same time. Before I go any further, I should explain MIDI Focus, which is very relevant here. Now, any keyboard, controller, or computer can be connected to a port, MIDI DIN, USB B, or USB Host, and without changing its MIDI channel, it can control any MIDI track on the S2400, regardless of its channel. To set this up, Hit Shift and Sync, open the Control Settings Accordion, and select the Control Port. I'm going to use a MIDI DIN because I have a keyboard controller connected to that port. When we're recording to a MIDI track, if we press the A button for that track, it will have what we call Input Focus, meaning that it will respond to any MIDI messages coming from the Control Port channel that we just configured in the Sync menu, regardless of that track's configured ports and channels that we were just looking at a moment ago. So in other words, you can use the same controller to play in lots of parts on different MIDI tracks and just keep hitting the A buttons to switch the focus to the controller on that track without having to reconfigure any settings. Press the A button again to turn focus off, press Shift and A to set the focus for more than one track at a time, and be aware that if a MIDI track has the A button configured for a MIDI function, then that track cannot receive MIDI focus because you'd be trying to use the A button for two things at once. For now, I'm going to set track E1 to receive MIDI from the MIDI DIN input port because my controller is connected to that port, but as just mentioned, I could use MIDI focus. I will then choose to output notes from the MIDI DIN out port because I've connected that to a synthesizer. If I press a key on the controller, the pad illuminates and the pad data is passed on to the synth. Another important note at this point, incoming MIDI messages from the configured ports will affect this track in the same way as the controls on the S2400. So if something external is mapped to CC7, for example, you can see on the display that the fader for this channel is affected, as if I were moving the physical fader on the S2400, so just be aware of this. Below the MIDI ports accordion, we can set the default MIDI channel for this track, which is called Track Channel. This is useful because you can assign a track's pad, buttons, knobs, and slider to different channels, which we'll see, but by default, they all follow the MIDI channel setting here, so you can change them all together at once. By default, the track channel is set as shown on the screen, but of course, you can manually adjust them from track 1 to 16. If there is a conflict where you've set more than one track to the same channel, an exclamation mark will appear next to the channel number. If those tracks use different ports, however, one via USB-B, one via USB host, and another via MIDI DIN, for example, this may not be an issue. You can also use MIDI Learn in the same way that you can with sample tracks. For example, if I scroll down and select a parameter, in this case, channel, and then send a MIDI message from my external keyboard controller on another channel, this will automatically be filled in for me. Below track channel, we can set the track pad color, which is self-explanatory. And below that, we can set the pad mode off. This means that the pad has no effect. Pitched means that the pad sends out MIDI note on off messages and the pitch and velocity of the messages are set with the level and pitch buttons and the fader, just like sample tracks. You can also select whether the pad output is dynamic, i.e. velocity sensitive, whilst in pitch mode. Note gated. 
This means that a note on message with a velocity of 127 is sent whilst the pad is held, and a note off message is sent when the pad is released. The note that is sent can be altered below. Note toggle. This means that a note on message with a velocity of 127 is sent when the pad is pressed and released, and a note off message is sent when the pad is pressed and released again. As before, the note that is sent can be altered below. CC gated. This mirrors note gated and means that a continuous controller number and value are sent when you press the pad and a different value is sent when you release the pad. You can set the CC number, on value and off value below. CC toggle. This means that a CC number and value are sent when you press and release the pad and a different value is sent when you press and release it again. As before, the CC number, on value and off value can be configured. CC single. This means that a CC number and value are sent when you press the pad and nothing is sent when it is released. Your CC number and on value can be set below. Down from that, we can set whether the A button for this track uses any of those options we've just looked at for the pad. Note gated, note toggle, CC gated, etc. If you select one, the associated settings will appear for you. As a reminder, if you assign the A button here, MIDI focus will not be possible for this track. As mentioned, the button defaults to follow the track channel at the top of the menu, but you can change its channel here too. Below that, we have the same options for the B button. Below that, we have the same options for the mute and solo buttons, as well as them having mute and solo options. Below that, we have our fader options. Off means that the fader for this track has no effect. CC means that the fader sends a CC when you move it. You can define the CC number it sends and the minimum and maximum values for when the fader is at its lowest point and highest point. RPN is a registered parameter number and NRPN is a non-registered parameter number. For either of these options, you can set the channel and the parameter least significant byte, LSB, and most significant byte, MSB, below. Next, the top and bottom knobs can also be configured in the same way as the fader to output nothing, CC, RPN, or NRPN. To record the fader and knob positions into a MIDI pattern, check the next option. This works the same as with sample tracks where fader and knob data is recorded into a pattern with a pad or button pressed, not by continuously holding them. Record groups allow you to record the movement of multiple faders and knobs at the same time. For example, you may have set up the faders of the tracks to control numerous parameters on a synthesizer via different CC numbers, and you want to manipulate them simultaneously rather than one at a time. Select the Rec Groups option and then press the first and last pad you want in a group to create a group. For example, pressing 1 and 3 would create a group of 1, 2 and 3. Pressing 1 and 5 would create a group of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, etc. Alternatively, you can use the keypad to the same effect. You can set up several groups and to remove a track from a group, press it twice. Swing them out, swing notes, quantize and quantize shift work the same as the sample tracks that we've covered in previous videos. Clear track parameters sets the function of all controls for the track to off. Clear this bank sets the function of all controls for the entire bank to off. In this case, that would be bank E. Clear all tracks sets the function of all controls for all MIDI tracks in all banks to off. So if you have banks E to H active, that would affect all 32 tracks in those four banks together. Load map file navigates you to your MIDI maps folder where you can load pre-saved maps you've made or maps you've downloaded and copied over. However, you can navigate through your files and load them from any location on your SD card. Save Map File allows you to save your MIDI map settings. These will be stored in the MIDI maps folder. However, your map file will be saved with your project as well, so long as you remember to save it, but it's good to save them to the maps folder also so that you can recall them independently of a project. So let's put that into practice. As mentioned earlier, I'd hooked up the Keystep Pro into the MIDI in DIN jack of the S2400, and the S2400 is outputting MIDI via the MIDI DIN out jack to a synth. I'm going to hit the A button for this track to activate MIDI focus as explained earlier. This is also a good idea because if you have other tracks sharing the MIDI channel that you haven't altered, channel one in this case, 
then your notes will get mixed up between them. So MIDI focus will keep them just on track E1. Sequencing works the same as with sample tracks. Having set my pattern length, tempo and quantize, I'll hit rec slash edit and run slash stop and play in the part. Next I'll move over to track E2 and I want to control the filter and resonance of the synth from this track. Conveniently by convention they default to CC74 and 71 which match the synth so I can control the filter already. I'm going to set the pad to CC gated as I don't want to send any note data, just CC. I'll make sure record faders and knobs is selected and I'll record and whilst hitting the pad move the filter. These positions will then be recorded into the pattern. Next I'll configure the A and B buttons of track E3 to switch the two chorus modes on the synth which are CCs 14 and 15. I'll use CC toggle and then I'll set the faders of tracks E4 to E6 to control the three delay parameters on the synth which are CCs 91, 12 and 13. Again I'll make sure the record faders and knobs boxes are all ticked and I'm going to group tracks 4 to 6 together in the record group section so that I can record them all at once. also input and edit using the step program as before and define or redefine values per step. As another example I've connected the S2400 to my computer via USB and chosen it as the MIDI input device within Cubase. I've then mapped several knobs and sliders to control the parameters of a soft synth and I can perform that in live. So that's MIDI only tracks. Thank you.